Hello everyone. Today, while you're watching this demo, I would like to talk to you about overcoming your fear of plein air painting. I guess there are few things more terrifying to an artist than actually having to paint in public or in front of a bunch of people. And as with anything, there are different ways, different things we can do to overcome our fears. We can overcome our fears of public speaking. We can overcome our fears of dancing in public, of painting in public, by following some simple steps. The first thing is, oddly enough, practicing in the studio. You know, the better you are at something, the less intimidated you are doing it in front of other people. The reason I mentioned dancing earlier is I always wanted to dance, but I was intimidated. I was afraid to do it. I didn't want to look foolish. And my wife and I started taking dancing lessons. And as we got better at it, it, um, it just became something you almost do by rote. Now we actually teach ballroom dancing once a week. And it's funny, I'll get up and be instructing people how to dance, and I'm talking, and we're actually doing the moves at the exact same time. And it's because I'm so confident with what I'm doing that I'm just not intimidated. I'm not, and if I make a mistake, I don't care. Um, I can admit, well, oops, I made a mistake. And that's what you want to do with painting as well. When, if you practice in your studio and you get reasonably good at what you're doing, then you know that you're going to be able to pull this painting off. Even if you're starting to have a little bit of trouble, you know that, hey, I've done good paintings in the past. I'll do good paintings in the future. I can fix this one. The second thing that you want to do is pick a place where you feel confident. Uh, when you first start going out painting in public, it can be very overwhelming. There are lots of people that can be around to disturb you, bump into your easel, strike up conversations, uh, get in your way, right where, you know, it's just, it seems to be a law in the universe that if you're looking at something, there may not be anybody else around, and then all of a sudden, the one person who walks into the scene, they're going to walk right in front of where you're painting. It just, again, it seems to be some law of the universe. Well, you have to learn to be able to overcome those things. But at first, you don't want to necessarily put yourself into a huge crowd where you're just, you're just overwhelmed. So pick a, a relatively uh, innocuous spot and start painting. And as you get more confident, as, as you, it becomes more routine, then you can do what I do now. I mean, I go and find large crowds. They don't bother me in the slightest. As a matter of fact, I enjoy being in the middle of a crowd. It's fun to talk to people. It's fun to interact with them. Well, it wasn't that way for me at the beginning. At the beginning, I was so terrified I actually set up in my backyard, and I did several paintings in my backyard before I had the confidence to go paint in my front yard. And I slowly weaned myself away from my house into the rest of the neighborhood. So it took me a little while as well, and it may take you. And that's okay. We want to slowly but surely build our confidence. Another thing is choose your subject matter carefully. When you go out to paint and you're already dealing with high traffic, conversations, who knows what else, bugs, wind, uh, sunlight that gets in your eyes. Okay, so you've already got a lot of challenges. You don't want to add to that by now picking a subject that is incredibly difficult to do. Don't let your first outing into the world of plein air painting by choosing, you know, the interior of the Vanderbilt mansion and now you've got, you know, crystal chandeliers and brocade furniture and tapestries and just 
all of these these really complex things visually going on. Choose something that you're relatively confident in painting. Uh, if you like painting uh, buildings, then choose a simple building or just a part of a building. If you like painting uh, animals, well, maybe go somewhere where there's some animals, but they're not animals that are moving around very quickly. They're they're slow moving grazing animals or something like that as opposed to monkeys in a cage that are jumping around and swinging from the from branches so yeah just use common sense and and try to pick something that you don't feel intimidated by at all and lastly and possibly most importantly when you go out to plein air paint smile yeah that's right just smile it is so easy to get so involved with what we're doing that we get this really stern look on our face uh, as we're concentrating. And that's very off-putting to people around you. And it also it affects your disposition. If you are sitting there with a frown on your face, it actually affects how you psychologically are thinking about yourself and your surroundings. But if you're sitting there with a smile on your face, it brightens up your, your disposition, your attitude, and it just it makes you more open to other people who are around you. And, and remember, you're out in public. And if you're out in public, then you have to interact with people. That's just the, the nature of it. I honestly have never, never, in all the years that I've plein air painted, I've never had anyone come up and really be ugly to me. People are usually very complimentary, and sometimes you kind of wonder, what painting are you looking at? Because you're, you're sitting there and feeling like, oh my gosh, this is a mess. And they're going, oh my, that's so beautiful. I just, I just wish I had your talent. Well, I think half the time they're being just kind and maybe the other half they're just not that terribly discerning. Either way, it feels good to you that someone is complimenting you. But just keep in mind that the average person on the street, they're impressed that you're out there doing anything. So if you can, and, and obviously they can't paint, they're mystified by the entire process. So the fact that you can do anything is light years ahead of their experience. And keep this in mind as well. In your world, you may watch people paint all the time. The average person never sees someone painting. They just don't. And so you are an object of intense fascination for them. And they're intrigued. And the more outgoing and open you are, the more inviting it is for people to come up to you. And uh, frankly, I mean, this is how you can sell your work. This is how you can get commissions to do things, is to be out and be seen. All right, so we'll wrap this up, and we'll go back over those five points again very quickly. First thing we want to do is practice in the studio. Let's get comfortable with the basics before we challenge ourselves with painting in the outdoors. The second thing is to choose a, a low traffic area. Choose a place where you're not going to be overwhelmed with all the distractions of the world. Thirdly, you want to travel light, not carry a whole lot of extra equipment around that's going to just weigh you down and get in the way. Number four, we want to pick an easy subject, something that we're confident that we can do a good job on. And then lastly, we want to smile. We want to approach the world around us with a, an open, confident, friendly manner because that's the energy that people are going to give us back. If you've enjoyed this episode of The Arthropologist, please hit the like button. And if you'd like to see more episodes like this, think about subscribing. I'm Bill Wilson, and I'm The Arthropologist.